push out there and you'd be out there straight away. Mm. But like you've got this ridge that comes out along. Always loaded with bait. I don't know. I don't bait, understand. Sardines, that's where we well that's where that sailfish would have been oh, jumped. Yeah. That sailfish we saw jumping yeah, out the window. Oh, he would have been out. So we're more there. just the other side of that. Yeah we were about we were uh, just about yeah probably there. Yeah. Uh, oh is that the bulb? Yeah that's the bulb. Oh, that's yeah. the bulb. The bulb, the bulb. The bulb. The and it comes in here cuts in Red Island's about here. Righto. Righto. I'll pass this to you, Juanita. Right, well, good luck. Legend, thanks mate, that's awesome. Thank you. All right. Catch you guys. Good swell. Big swell. See you guys. Catch ya. Our good friends on wildcard charters uh, are just dropping us off at the midway point of the Wessel Island and we're going to slowly make our way up to Cape Wessel, Simo and I. And we're going to check out some places that we haven't been before, some amazing geological structures that scatter along the Wessel Islands. But our main aim is to try and get to the Cape and do some poppering along the foreshores around there. Bruce, Juanita, Tiger, Prue and Elspeth, they're the family that run and operate Wildcard and they have over 40 years of knowledge of the Wessel Islands. They're actually professional Mackie fishermen as well um, and they're heading up there to do a couple of days Mackie fishing. We're going to find a camp midway up to the Cape and then we're going to make our way the next day up all the way and, and meet up with these guys again up there where then they're going to actually tow us home from that point because the Wessel Islands are an extremely remote chain of islands, one of the most remotest places on earth actually. So it's just an incredible place. Anyway. That is amazing. The first thing you, you notice when you get up there is how cool it is. Bruce and uh, Juanita said that during the, the heart of the wet season, this just pours off. It's a waterfall that comes down here and the fresh meets the salt, but we're just at the start of the wet season and we've just got a bit of a trickle 
um, and that's obviously creating all those flowers and that greenery. It's such a, a beautiful, eerie, still, cool pocket around here. This sandstone is actually 800 million years old. All along the eastern side of the Wessel Islands, you'll find these undercuts and caves and they're caused by a couple of things. They're caused by the hydraulic action of the king tides and cyclonic waves undercutting and then a constant drizzle of fresh water slowly seeping through from the back will undermine it as well. It's just really incredible. It's amazing. And some of these caves like this along here have permanent bodies of water um, up in the top of reaches of them and they've got actually freshwater species of fish that are permanently there. They've even got yabbies. So even though this wrestle stretches out for 100 kilometres off the, uh, the coast, there's still billabongs and fresh water and fish that have been obviously in a chain of breeding for millions and millions of years. It's just incredible and so dramatic. Now this bad boy is a whale skull, a whale skeleton actually. Bruce and Juanita said that there might be some scattered along here and this is one of them. There's his vertebrae coming down the back there. Wow, look at that. Well, it's eerily similar texture to the sandstone in the wall, yeah. isn't it? So occasionally uh, whales beach themselves along these beaches of the Wessels. Um, obviously because they jut out so far that they intercept a lot of you know, big oceanic creatures come around this way. But that's a remarkable sized bone. I, I think, know. didn't Bruce say that he actually came across a stranding of 22 whales at one, on one beach at one stage? Yeah. I think it's still yeah. uncertain as to why they do it. See the bottom, possible trout and cod territory. Here we go. A lot of stuff on the bottom here. Oh, there's a hit. There, there we go. go. There we go. Oh, I'm off. I'm off. Hang on. Come on. Oh, yep, busy. you're on. You're on. Whoa, look at that. That's complaining. Oh, there we go. There we go. He's a decent fish, I think. You on? Yeah. No. Nah. Nah. Uh, uh, yeah, it's got some weight. I might just have a supplementary cast. Uh, so we've hit something. It feels quite decent. Ah! Uh, and I'm off. How are we going to pull the hooks here? We've got to really drag too tight. I'll just check this lure because it was new out of the box. Yep, that is Spanish mackerel. Maybe I dropped my drag off. I did a rookie's error there, I think. I think I had the drag too tight and there's a bottom bent treble. Been doing rookie errors for 35 years. <laughs> Little squall. You can see all that line of white caps there. It's a bit disheartening heading straight into that, but that's where we need to go. And if that rain comes and hits us, we'll just have to duck into one of, around one of these headlands. There's a whole bunch of caves that we can go into to avoid that. But that's the nature of fishing in the wet season. You get these huge storms rolling through. And there's that cool breeze coming off the front of the squall as the storm comes through, it pushes a lot of wind under it. But it's a completely different contrasting view. When the sun's out, this place is just lit up full of colours. Deep blues, light blues, reds. But as these storms come over, it turns into a very sinister, gloomy looking place. Pretty uninviting. But there's mackerel, big ones, that way. And that temperature's dropped six degrees. Might miss the tail end of that, hopefully. That seems to be going that way. Famous last words. What's that there? It's like a bigger one, eh? Bigger cave, is it? Go in there? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh yeah, that's a whopper. <laughs> yeah, let's go in there. Get that torch under there. Where is it? I got it. Shit, yeah, look at that. What? How far in does it go? Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Thank you. 
<laughs> Mate, have a look. Wow. That goes all the way in there. Look at the green there, Simon. Oh, man. That is incredible. That's cool. Look at that. Caverns everywhere. Cool. Oh, man. That's got to be 100 metres long. Oh, Julie. Still gone. It's up there. Feel the heat. Warm, eh? Oh, there's a bat. Spooky. You wouldn't want to be in here with a big swell rolling through, yeah. would you? Massive tide. Sudden squall. How, how is that roof staying up? Get the heebie-jeebies a little bit with a few of those big cracks. Water is crystal clear too, that's the other thing. There's little fish running through here. I've never seen an environment like this. That is really Amazing. special. The thickness of the air, how humid yeah, it's it is. Heavy in here. Well, anyway, the tide's getting a bit low, but I'm going to sneak out before we get stuck. That's just another example of what the Wessel's about. That is just a phenomenal geological structure. And around every bay, the Wessel's offers something like that, something completely different. That'd be 100 metres long in there. And the water is clear as, clear as gin. And uh, it's quite eerie, actually. There was bats kicking around. There was this green moss that covered the whole sort of side walls of it. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, that's it. You're only going to get in there on a high tide too. You wouldn't want to be much longer than what we were. It's just amazing. And that Incredible. would be the, the product of hundreds of millions of years of king tides smashing against it and cyclonic winds punching inch by inch over millennia, deeper and deeper. But We've just had a few, a few passing showers and I can imagine that, that waterfall above it, that curtain entry would be really rushing if we had a really big storm. That would be awesome. It's absolutely incredible. It takes your breath away. This is Cape Wessel, aka Cape Carnage. Cape Carnage. And, and uh, been tagged by wildcard. Alright. Oh jeez. Under the sounder. Queenie City, I think. Alright, this shouldn't take long around Cape Wessel. Just so many fish here. And we're going past a big school of bait here too. So this. He's yep. absolutely there primo. We there we go. Primo place. There we go. It didn't take long at all. Okay. I might get hit on the way in. I did. Oh, I'm on. Oh, oh they're on the boat. Fish. They're under the boat. I'm on. I'm on. They're queenies, huh? Ah, uh, yeah. It's not that big. There's fish under the boat everywhere. Medium-sized queenie for up here. Not exactly what we're after. Very oh, and we got our first shark. Good luck, buddy. You're gonna need every bit of it. Here we go. He's away. That was just a field of queenies. Oh, unfortunately, tap, tap, tap. that guy is, is done. But he's going to go back and feed a whole lot of other fish. This is a very likely area. Look at all the elements. We've got a big bait ball in front of us. We're on the pressure side of this drop off. Right on the pressure point. What Morgs means by a pressure point is that the tide is, is flowing this way. And when tide hits any sort of structure, be it a rock, be it a bommy, or be it a, a large plateau, on the front side where the tide's hitting, there's an area of calmer water caused by the turbulence. And the bait fish will sit there because it's easy for them to hold in that area. They don't have to work hard. If they get swept along the side, they go off into the abyss. So those bait fish are holding on what's called the pressure side of the structure. 
and that's where you'll find the predators as well. And that's what's happening here. These waves that you're seeing around, these are, these are tidal waves, standing waves as a result of the tide, where the, the structure underneath is forcing the water up. The jury's out on the um, additional attractant value that jiggling your rod would do when you're trolling. What do you reckon, Morgs? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, it just gives me, it I makes, think, me, makes me feel like I'm in the game a bit more, to be honest. Yeah, yeah it's a bit more involving. I don't know, we get them, we get hits when they're just being on that mono speed. And we get hits when we move them a little. I think sometimes fish track a lure for a while and just wait for signs of distress or life. And I yeah. think as soon as you twitch it a little bit, it shows that they could be in a bit of trouble, could be a weakness in the in the bait fish, and then that's when they'll hit it. So that's when I think it's um, more important. I also think it's less important to do it when there's more fish around. When they're in a competitive mood, they know they got to hit that fish before the other guy next to them hits it, so they're less picky. So when it's slow going, I think it's an idea to give it a twitch. That's my theory, most likely wrong. <laughs> Amazing bottom here. We're in 15 metres of water here, and the, sh the shore's obviously just there. But on the bottom are these huge boulders, and it's just fish covering them. So these lures aren't going to last long. We might even get the poppers out at some stage and have a flick at these rocky ledges because there's a lot of trout, there's a lot of mangrove jack, cod, trevally, and even there's a species of trevally called bluefin. We know that hang around Cape Wessel, which is the very end. They're, they're an oceanic trevally and the colours on them are just stunning. Just vivid. And there's one, there's one spot where we can, we know we've seen them before and found them before. So we'd love to get one of those on camera. One of my favourite all-time fish, bluefin trevally. But they're not, they're a pretty rare capture, so we don't hold our breath. You on there, Simon? You're on too. Yeah. Big trout. Get him up. Good one. Yeah, Good one. Double double header of trout here. Solid trout. And behind these guys was a stonking barracuda. That was a good, good. That's a fair double hookup, isn't it? Look at that. Um, that's a beautiful double hookup, boy. The reason why we probably didn't get overexcited about this because this is a very common theme around here. Just amazing amount of coral trout that hang in these remote waters, particularly Cape Wessel, where it just doesn't get any fishing pressure whatsoever, almost. So you can just get constantly catch fish like this, which is just obviously incredible. To... Oh, big trout. Don't tell me another big trout along here. We just can't go 15, 20, 15, 20 metres. Yes, yeah, we've got a little a Spaniard. Beauty. Oh, tuna. No. Tuna. Beauty. Northern you bring around here, mate. Northern longtail. It's amazing. You're catching coral trout in the same same water that you're catching tuna. There we go. Oh, Beautiful. Bit of claret. Oh, man, that's that is so incredible. Fun. We are literally catching tuna and coral trout on the same run. That's a northern longtail tuna. Counter coloured as you can see. Got his dark coloration from above. All these fins fold down. They're creating a real bullet shape and that's why they can move so quick in the water. Anyway, they're not good outside the water so we've got to pit, spear him back in. Oh, big on, spear, Simon. Big spear. He's alright. Of activity on the sounder there. Yeah, that's Spaniards. They're all vertically positioned. Just going back over what we think looks like Spanish mackerel on the sander. Spanish mackerel normally show themselves on a sander in a vertical pattern. A lot of other fish like trevally or queenfish will be just clumps on the sander. That looks to me like Spaniards, the way they're sitting on that structure. And it's just about here. So once our lures go over that, we'll find out if indeed they are Spanies. Yep. A little head shake, it's a bit hard to discern the difference between a 
Astra Valley and a Spanish mackerel at this stage. You're waiting for a long oh, My money's on Spanish. Run. There it is. Money's on a Spanny. It is, yeah. yeah. Little Spaniard. Oh, this is a puppy. It's a puppy. Just a pup. A foal. We're after the horse. We're, We're after the ones that eat those. Yeah, that's right. That's about perfect eating size. An un yeah. unlikely double hookup. The odd couple. Yeah. It just goes to show the diversity of fish you can get in these shallow reef areas. Oh, yeah. Trout, Trevally, Max. Anyway, you want to go for a popper or a jig? Let's have a popper, eh? All right. Some of that stuff over there. Yeah, go on there. Yeah. Might have a popper of this stuff here. This all looks excellent popping area. Shallow reef, little caves, undercuttings, bommies. Something like that there. Shall we? Yep. Alright. So it's popper time. We love the surface lures. Oh! Trout, there it is. Is it a trout or a jack? We Get him up, Simo. Clap First on top cast. of the water. Gee, you made a snap on top of the water, didn't it? What a that is exactly what you want to hear the very first cast in a place. Okay? Lovely little medium-sized trout. trout. Second cast. Oh, that is just going to be what? smashed. That's gone too far with There's the wind. No way that's coming back. You didn't want to go that deep. That's right in the bowels of hell in there. No bait fish has ever been through there. So all these fish under these rocks are constantly looking up always looking up for a bait fish to pass over the top of them. So that's why they react so quickly as soon as your, your popper lands anywhere near there. They're hyper vigilant in this shallow water. Here we go, he's on. No. Oh, yep, oh, there we go, that's, that's a biggie. That's a, oh, yep, oh, what huge. Is that? It's huge. Keep its head up, keep its head up. Well done, Simo. Come on, keep going. There he is. It's huge. Go out, go out that way. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be careful everyone here. Got to manage this. Big cooter. Simo, oh. 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 win this. He's a big fish. Simpson on the popper in the shallows. Whoa! Came out like a Loch Ness monster. There's a horse. It's a great fish on a popper. Holy dude. Look at the thickness of that thing. That's in that's in a meter Don't get his, of water. Keep his, his, there, try to keep that line out of his yeah. Anyway. That was a massive barracuda. Can I have a fish? Yeah, check in that is. Alright. Ah. Oh damn. Oh, oh dear. No way that's coming out. Oh dear. Alive. How's that making that out alive? Oh, oh. there it is. Oh, big Flowery. 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 Yep. Uh, I can see right down his throat when yep. he took that. Uh, uh, Hold on. Uh, look at the beautiful water, is he? That's crystal clear water. Isn't it? We're in three and a half meters of water and it looks like it's a meter deep. Hold on, boy. Uh, yes. oh, good Superb one. Superb fish. Good one. Beautiful. Lovely popper eating species. That's yeah. what it looks like when you got a massive coming after you yeah. all over. I what a see fish. Right down his mouth when he took I that. Don't want to keep him too long on the carpet because that's not good for his skin. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Absolutely stunning in this water. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now there's bluefin trevally around here. Yeah. We'd love to get one of those. This is the sort of country we get them on. Oh, that is what the is that? big trout, Simo. Really keep his head here. I think I got him. I think I got him. He might try to do you in that thing there. Oh, Jeez. superb. He had three cracks at the cherry there, didn't he? And he had another met. He had another friend with him. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is man. superb. That does not get boring, I don't know. Doesn't it? That's just awesome. 
Got another one of similar size right with him. Anyway, look how fat he is. He's been gorging himself in the buffet. Oh, shark him in. in there. there were several fish after that lure I saw. Two bloops in, three dark shadows came out from a bommie. So in that situation, that makes excellent fishing because as soon as there's more than one fish, as soon as there's two or three, it becomes competitive with them and that means they're less likely to turn your lure down. Oh! oh. oh. Trevally? Yep, 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 Trevally. No, he's, he's going to do me down that hole. Uh, here we go. Uh, it's coming at us. He's down in there too. No, stay out, stay out. I've got to keep a little leverage on him. There's sharks on him. There's brown things everywhere following him. Small GT, eh? Wow. Man. God, they can that fight. Beast up in the shallows. Wow. There we go. It's a giant trevally. Great fish, they get so much bigger than this, but even at that size, he's a handful. As you can tell by the deep breathing. Wow. Show the thickness of these guys. Yeah. What a superb fish. We thought it was one. Wouldn't. They're still there. And on, watch this. My money is on them being another, even bigger one. In that, what was in this, following? Cod? In this corner, cods and sharks were all over this trevally as it was coming in. Oh, yeah, here we go. Huge thing. Oh, there what it is. is what? <laughs> What's that? That's a nice bit. That's a bottom feeder. <laughs> He's got the heavy gear. Come on, Hartney. <laughs> what are you worried about? Yeah, it's a blue. Blue Trevally. <laughs> that is what we wanted. Right there. Oh, just check out those colours. Lovely fish. Oh, wow. The peacock of the Trevally family. This is one of my all-time favourite fish. It's just superb looking animals. Whew, boy, at that. That is a bluefin Trevally for obvious reasons. Just one of the, the great looking fish of the ocean. One of my favourite fish. We knew that they were around here somewhere, particularly up on the top flats of these rock shelves. Wow, what a special fish. Look at that purple in his tail. Goodness me, he's a good looking fish. Love that. That electric blue colour is found in a lot of animals around here. It's my favourite colour. I'm not sure why, why it's so prevalent. Whew. Here he goes. Sorry. Here I That is one of the absolute highlights for me. I love catching those fish. I love catching all fish, but there are a select few, thanks mate, select few that I really enjoy catching. And the Bluefin Trevally is one of them. Just everything about them, they cover all the bases. They're an excellent sports fish. They fight like mad and they're just stunning to pull a live one out of the water with all lit up iridescent blue dots. Wow. I'm in a good place right now. That was amazing. Look at that, that's about a two and a half, three metre crocodile. He's just come in. No, and he's got his, when they've got their backs out of the water like that, it's more of a probably a te territorial posture. Yeah. If he wanted to actually eat us, he'd be under the water, you'd just see his head. He's telling us, this is my country, F off. The Wessel Islands are just full of crocodiles. It's a perfect place for them. There's, there's all their dietary needs are here. There's a lot of fresh water around. So as pristine and as beautiful as this place is, it's just full of sharks and full of crocodiles. If the remoteness doesn't kill you, it's those guys. driving shaft. 
This is actually the northernmost point of the Wessel Islands. This is Rimbicha Island and behind us is Cape Wessel. It was named after the governor of the Dutch Spice Islands in the 1600s actually. And this is a, actually we got this wrong, this is a Vietnamese yeah. refugee boat. We thought this was uh, a Korean cargo ship, but it's actually a Vietnamese uh, refugee boat that fled Vietnam during the uh, North-South War in Vietnam and it had a hundred men, women and children on board and they landed here and then they disabled the lighthouse behind us here to alert the authorities and from all reports have actually uh, assimilated into the Northern Territory into Darwin in fact so it'd be really interesting to know where their descendants are at the moment but this whole chain of islands is full of really incredibly interesting uh, wrecks like this, a lot of World War II wrecks, a lot of Macassan Prowl wrecks, a lot of early explorer uh, wrecks around here. So it's just full, loaded, full of history along here. Yeah. Morgs and I have been here a couple of dozen times now and there's just so many layers to this place. Uh, each time you're just seeing something new and it's just, it's just so fresh every time we come. And the fishing is just mind-blowing out here. It simply is. It's just probably the best in the Northern Territory. And that's just the Wessels. I can see a massive saltwater crocodile over there and we can see fish cruising along this edge here. It's just so full of life and history. It's just, it's my favourite place in the world and every time we come back here, we just see new stuff all the time. And wildcard charters have just rocked up. Anyway, I can't wait to get on that boat, get a bit of air con and maybe crack a beer. Fishing the Wild would like to sincerely thank the traditional owners and custodians, Mr Terry Durichini Yumbalu, the Warramiri clan. And if you'd like to experience the wild Wessel Islands for yourself and be a part of the wonderful Wildcard family while you're doing it, then head to wildcardluxurycruises.com.au. If you're new to Fishing the Wild and enjoy our content, then consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. It helps us keep creating more free episodes. And if you'd like to know more about the Northern Territory or how to plan your own adventure, then head to northernterritory.com. Links to this and other information about this particular episode are also in the description area. Catch you later. How's horses go? Daryl Braith right again? Uh, we were the... We were the... <laughs> I just don't know the words <laughs> other than the chorus. That's the start. I oh, know, you did it well. This is how you did it. <laughs> That's the way it's gonna be, little darling. We'll mm -hmm. go riding on the horse. I was living next to the Darwin Ski Club and he played that, I'm not kidding, four times in, in, the, in his I've set. Seen, I've seen him play it on a number of occasions and it's fantastic because as soon as he finishes playing it, the whole crowd just goes. Awesome. <laughs> For his oh, other song. Drowns out his next, next four <laughs> songs, want, wanting to play horses again. <laughs> He's just got to own it, doesn't he? He's just got to own that success of that one song and just until he plays it, everyone just chanting until he plays it. <laughs> just and rounds then, out the... <laughs> and then he plays it and then everyone chants it again. Horses! <laughs> <laughs> he's trying to do his bit. You can see his, his brow furrowing. You know, right, I will play it again then, you dickhead. Uh, imagine you get, you know, they've got those A4 set lists, they stick on the things, just horses, 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 horses. He had another one too, didn't he? He had another couple of hits. I didn't hear him. Were you thinking of horses because of Mackie's horses? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, was, the brain linkage was? I was yours? hoping to sing a horse. We'll go riding on the horses, yeah. yeah. Way up in the sky! Way up in the sky, little darling. Uh, when you, and the film clip. Running along the beach and then the big. 
back. He was sprinting along the beach in jeans and a white shirt. And his love interest was like 10 times better looking than he, than he could have ever achieved. That's fine, he's the star, mate. He, can, he chooses it. Was it a, he was on a horse. He was barebacking a horse. Yeah. A white horse on the beach. In jeans, that's got to be uncomfortable. You reckon he took a few cues off Top Gun? Huh? Very good. Took, took a few cues off the Top Gun beach volleyball. That, that still today is the only mistake in the whole Top Gun movie. Mistake? Mistake. Still talking about it. I don't like it. What? No one plays beach volleyball in tight jeans and uh, tight Maverick and Goose do. No, so does Iceman. Like, that's why they didn't last the whole game. Quick. No, because he had a date with his teacher he was going to share. There's just layers of right, boyhood that, ideals. Yeah, that and shape. <laughs> no, not just that he goes back to the teacher he's sleeping with. He gets on a motorbike and breaks every speed law in the book to get there. Then has a beautiful night with her and leaves a love letter in the shape of a jet plane on her pillow. That's a big 24 hours in anybody's book, man. <laughs>